So Andy Haig here with Insulize again in Pittsburgh, and we're about to reinsulate this uh, 1960s era Cape Cod style home here in Monroeville. And anyone that's familiar with these houses knows that you got a sloped ceiling like this and little short knee wall attics on the front and back of the home. And the reason that we're out here is because the homeowner had hired another insulation company that's very well known in the city and they specialize in doing injection foam. And he hired them last year to do it and they didn't do a very good job. So we're gonna look at how they did it and we're gonna show you our process for re-insulating this style of home, which we've done hundreds of and on our website, insulewise.com. We've got a really good page that shows exactly how we do this sort of structure because it's uh, somewhat tricky. And if you don't do it right, you don't cross the I's and uh, dot the I's and cross the T's are supposed to, you end up spending thousands and still having a cold house, which is what this homeowner has. So we're gonna come through here now. This is where the homeowner covered their existing knee wall hatch and they've got, he's got four of them. And the reason he duct taped it off with plastic is because there's constantly a, a cold breeze coming through. So I'm going to pull this off real quick. And we're going to see how this other company insulated this existing hatch. Okay. So what they did is they took old R13 fiberglass bats and stapled them to the backside of the knee wall. Now it's a pretty rudimentary way to do it. It's probably slightly better than nothing, but not by much. Um, there's no weather stripping around the perimeter to keep the drafts from coming from the knee wall space into the room here. And the bottom of the hatch isn't insulated. And this is just not a very good way to do this. Um, we're gonna pop over and look at another knee wall space over here and see what's going on. This hatch here, ah, um, some fiberglass here. It looks like the other one was just kind of thrown into the knee wall space haphazardly. And I'm gonna take this and we're gonna look and see what's going on in here. These knee wall spaces, they need to be ventilated. And beneath the floor here, there is a gap that's underneath this knee wall space that we call a floor transition gap where it, it transitions from interior heated space to exterior unconditioned space. And they didn't do anything there. And they installed the fiberglass batting the wrong side, wrong way. And there is some injection foam that blew out from wherever they were trying to do that. So um, in addition, the slope ceiling bays were never insulated above. I'm not sure if you can see that, But if you don't insulate <laughs> the upper part of the building assembly, it's pretty darn hard to make it comfortable here. So now we're inside the one of the knee wall spaces in the back of the house. What I'm going to show you guys is how not to do something like this, okay? <clears throat> You'll notice first that the other company blew a layer of blown fiberglass inside here. Now, if you don't know what's going on, you might look at that and say, hey, there's insulation. Something good is happening. What these guys fail to understand is that you've got to insulate the surface that you're trying to uh, have the heat not transfer through. Now, this is a subfloor that I'm sitting on inside this knee wall space, and there's floor joists that run in under it that support the second floor. Now, they didn't get any insulation. Here, bring the video in. They didn't get any insulation in the subfloor or beneath the subfloor where the insulation needs to go. I'm going to take this, and I had to pull up. <clears throat> one of these pieces of uh, one by that was here. It took about 45 seconds with a crowbar. These gaps are what we call floor transition gaps. They run underneath the second floor <coughs> knee wall. Excuse me. And what happens is when this house is heating itself in the winter time, the heat comes up from the first floor. And instead of heating the floor in the second floor, it comes right up and out through these gaps. So the first thing you've got to do when insulating a house with knee walls is put foam board down inside to block these and then seal around them. Once that's done, we're going to dense pack cellulose underneath this floor and get the insulation that's in this area now into the right space, which is down in here versus on top of the subfloor. Okay, so here's one of the reasons why we don't like injection foam, which 
is a much different foam application than polyurethane spray foam injection foam. It's a water-based foam that gets injected into building cavities. The reason we don't like it is because it shrinks after it goes into the base. So we're in this Cape Cod. This is the side of a dormer wall here. I pulled back the improperly installed fiberglass bats and the injection foam is just dropping out of the stud bays that it was injected to, injected into from above. There's a wall that goes up above us here. And this stuff is just, ladies and gentlemen, this is a more, much more expensive insulation process than what we use at Insulwise. The marketing's fantastic, but in our opinion, it's crap. And you're seeing why right here. Let's see what happens when I pull this out. Oh, okay. Just what you want after you spend thousands of dollars with another company. Um, so we will dense pack this with cellulose insulation. That stuff, once it goes in, it's not going anywhere. It's a purely physical process and uh, it works great. It infrareds great <coughs> 20 years after the work's done. And we guarantee that you're never gonna be having any crap like this happen. Again, this was done last year. So as I showed you before, with, with any type of home that has these short knee walls, whether it's a Cape Cod or a three-story home, you've got these gaps that run underneath the top floor, and we call these transition gaps again because the, the space here transitions from conditioned space on the other side of the knee wall to unconditioned space over here. And what unconditioned means is that you're not heating and cooling it. And you've got to fill these giant voids that run underneath, run underneath the floor, otherwise the heat just comes right up and escapes to the outside. And all that's required to do that is to cut some type of blocking, and we just use foam board to do that. Cut that, insert it into these spaces here, and then put a bead of foam around it. Now, the type of foam you use isn't important. I mean, some guys like to use gun foam. This is just off-the-shelf great stuff right here. And it, as you can see with the other ones that I've already done, it cures and works just fine, and it's going to do exactly what we want. And what it's actually doing is trapping the heat so when it comes up from the floor under us the heat's actually going to be warming this uh interior part of the second floor as opposed to just exhausting out into the attic space because heat's always going to go from higher concentration to lower concentration so we're back here at this home that we insulated last week and when we first took a walk through i opened up these crawl space doors and showed you guys how the previous contractors had just stapled crappy old you know, thin fiberglass pieces to the back sides of the door and hope that that would somehow do something. And what we're going to show you now is what this looks like after we've done, um, we've completely retrofitted all these spaces. We air sealed them, we re-insulated them, and it's just a much better situation. So you can see now these crawl space doors are now insulated on the back side with two inch thick R10 rated uh, foam board insulation. They're attached mechanically with screws and washers. This stuff is never coming off. And we also placed weather stripping inside the doors here. And what happens is that when this door closes, it's closing into the actual weather stripping and it's sealing it so that we don't feel cold drafts coming out. Now what I'm gonna do next is show you the work that we did on the inside. So previously, what the other company had done is blow a bunch of fiberglass on top of this raised subfloor, which was actually the wrong surface to insulate. So what we had to do is pull up one of these panels right here, and uh, we pulled it up, took the old blown in fiberglass, pushed it back underneath the floor so it was in contact with the ceiling below. And then what we did is we came in and insulated the gaps beneath the floor with the foam board and uh, we'll show you that here in a moment or go back to it. And then we went over top of these knee walls with new R19 really thick full fiberglass bats. And you can see here that we then covered them over with a home wrap and the home wrap acts as an air barrier. So if there's air currents moving through this space, the fiberglass is protected from being wind washed. So it doesn't have heat leaking out of it. Additionally, this homeowner can now use the space for storage and storing things year round. They'll be dry, they'll be protected. One of the other things that we do with these knee wall spaces is that we install ventilation in the form of slant back vents in them because these are now isolated attic spaces. And when you have an isolated attic space, it has got to be ventilated. So in the event that 
moisture gets into it somehow, possibly in the form of a, a roof leak or um, any other thing like that, the water has a way to vent to the outside so the mold problem isn't formed. So uh, we're still in the same house here and I'm with um, the homeowner and his dog, Todd. And the last thing that I wanna show you guys is this is one of the other knee wall spaces and these Cape Cods often will have two, three, four independent spaces, right, Todd? And uh, one of the things that we had to do was that there's a bathroom over here and the bathroom had water supply pipes that were exposed in this knee wall space. And you have to be very careful in these homes in the northern climates because when you're insulating around water pipes, you cannot have insulation ever between the water pipe and the actual heated surface. You kind of need the house to lose a little bit of heat in those places to make sure the water lines don't freeze. So the question is, how do you deal with it? So I'm gonna take the camera right now and show you. So again, here's one of our insulated accesses and the weather stripping around it to seal it. And when we look in here, our water pipes are on the other side of this foam board wall. And we made sure not to put any insulation between the, the water pipes and the drywall there. And the heat's gonna kind of bleed out from the house, but be uh, held in place by the foam. And, and that way we pretty much guarantee that the water pipes that are behind that will never freeze. Before the current homeowner moved in, these pipes had frozen at one point in the past and flooded out the house. So um, there's a lot of things that if you're not careful as an insulator can go wrong. And uh, we try to be dotting as many I's and crossing as many T's as we can. And just to show you how the other part of this knee wall system looks here, uh, you can see the walls really well batted and covered with home wrap, very durable system. And you can see right where this panel is here that we cut out so that we could get access to seal the transition gaps below the knee wall space all the, all the way through here.